In this tutorial, we're going to encode the Sudoku problem into a SAT problem. So if you don't know the rules of uh, the Sudoku puzzle, I encourage you to look it up on the internet. The first thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to model this problem. So you know that in the Sudoku, we have a 9x9 grid, and each cell can contain 9 possible values. So one way we can model this problem is by having a grid of booleans and a 3D matrix where if x, i, j, k is true, it means that cell i, j has value k plus 1. Now we have a representation for our problem and we can talk about the constraints in the problem. In the Sudoku grid, we have to make sure that each number appears only once per row, only once per column, and also only once per 3x3 three three subgrid. So all these constraints are of the same type. A number appears only once per some set of cells. And we're going to start the tutorial by writing a function that, given a list of literals, returns a clause that will make sure that only one of these literals is true. Let's start by importing the C3 package and everything in it and importing the combination function from the iter tools package. And now we're going to write the exactly one function that takes as input a list of literals and returns a clause that makes sure that only one of these literals can be set to true. So if you think about it, the exactly one constraint is an extension of the at most one constraint for every pair in the combination of literals of size two. So every pair A, B, we add the constraint that says either not A or not B is true. So that ensures that there's at most one of the literals true. So then when we have all this constraint, we can add another constraint that ensure at least one of the literals is true. And for this, we just need to add the close. The disjunction of all the literals is true. So at least one of the literals will be true. And then we return the conjunction of all the clauses we created in this list. Now that we have written this general function that returns a constraint for a given set of literals, we're going to focus on the Sudoku problem and first start by creating the set of literals. We have our 9x9 grid and for each cell we want 9 different digits. So we're going to create here our 3D matrix for every i in range 9 and then for every j in range 9. We append a list to the list of literals. For every cell i, j we create a list of boolean literals with digits ranging from 0 to 8, and each of these literals is named x, i, j, digit. Now let us create the solver and we're going to add the different constraints one by one. The first set of constraints we want to add is that there's only one possible value per cell. So for every i in range 9 and for j in range 9, add the constraint there's exactly one of the literals in the cell i, j that is true. So there's only one possible digit per cell. Remark that we didn't talk about this set of constraints when we explained the Sudoku problem, but here we need to add these constraints because of the way we chose to model the problem. If we didn't, we would have possibly several values for a single cell. Now we are going to add a second set of constraints that says that each value appears only once per row. So for every i in range 9 and for every value in range 9, we're going to collect all the literals that correspond to this specific value x. So row for j in range 9, we add the literal i, j, x. Then we add the constraint that ensure there's exactly one of the digits that is true. Now we can do the same thing for the columns, for, for every j in range 9 and for every digit in range 9, we add the constraint that says there's only one of these digits that is set to true for the column. 
And finally, we are going to add the set of constraints that says each value is used only once in each subgrid. So the only slightly more complicated thing is that we have to collect all the literals in each subgrid. So for every subgrid, so for i in range 3 and for j in range 3, and then we iterate through all the cells of that subgrid, so for x in range 3 and y in range 3, we add the cells to the grid cell. But we also need to do this for every digit, and we want to have a separate constraint for every digit, so we wrap this in a loop that iterates over k in range 9. And for every single of these digits, we add the constraints that say exactly one of the cells can be set to this digit. Usually in a Sudoku problem, you also have a grid with uh, values that are already set in the grid. We are going to assume we have a matrix grid that represents the values in that grid, and zero means there is no value, and we are going to add the constraints to ensure that in the solution, the literals are set according to the constraints we have. So for i in range 9 and j in range 9, if the grid ij value is larger than 0, then we add a constraint that say the literal in cell ij corresponding to digit grid ij must be set to true. Now, since our code depends on this grid of uh, constraints, we're going to wrap all of this in a function that's called solve and that takes as argument a grid. And in this function, we check if the solver found a solution. So we call the check method of the solver s that we created earlier. And if it's uh, satisfiable, then we want to print a solution. So print solution is a function that we are going to implement. And we pass to this function the model of the solver and the literals, so that's the 3D matrix that contains the names of the literals. Otherwise, we print unset. Let us write the print solution function. So this print solution function takes as argument a model and the grid of literals, and we're going to print all the lines that corresponds to the line of the grid. So for i in range 9, and we append the list to the list of lines, and for j in range 9, we are going to look for the digit that corresponds to this cell. So we start with digit equals 0, and then we iterate for every boolean corresponding to the digit between 0 and 9. We evaluate the model for the corresponding literal, and if it is true, then the digit is x plus 1. So we append the digit x to the line i. And finally, we just print every line by joining all the digits with uh, spaces. Oh, I made a small mistake, so correct, replace x by digit. Now we have written all the functionality necessary to solve the problem. We have a solve function that takes as input as a grid and encodes all the constraint in a SAT problem and then calls the solver to find a solution. And then the print solution function prints this solution. Now we're going to just write a small driver code to read an input and you can find the input samples on the tutorial website. So in this script, we are just going to open a file and for every line in this file, we're going to create a line for the grid of numbers. Each line contains a list of numbers and we can use the int function to translate the character into an integer. Now we just need to call the solve function on the grid and exit. For example, this input grid contains a first line where the first uh, two numbers are 5 and 3, and then no number is assigned, so it's a 0, and then the fifth number is a 7. So if we come back to our script and call the script on this uh, input file, we should get a completed grid. 
but in this case we get an error, so a list index out of range. So if you come back to the solution we wrote, we actually made a mistake when we wrote a grid ij as the index. When we add the constraint ensuring that the numbers in the solution correspond to the number in the constraint grid, we should have put grid ij minus one instead. And while we're at it, we can also correct the mistake when we check that the solver returns a sat answer. Now let's try to run this again, and now we get a solution.